What's up guys? Welcome back to Fisher Hex. Today we're going to be doing our weekly rambling video. Now, if you're new to the channel, this is where I give you guys some one-on-one -on -one time, give you some updates, kind of not as formal as my usual videos. And uh, yeah, so I got a quite a bit I want to talk about in this one. And I do apologize. I did not get this video out on Friday. Uh, just life happens. I can pretty much chop it up to that. Either way, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing on the list here is Reefapalooza New York Prep. Now, uh, we have booth 528 next month, and i um, definitely uh, kind of antsy. This is uh, my first big show. I've done local for Ag Swap, so this is my first time actually getting out there to a bigger show. So there's a lot of prep going into it, uh, getting new tanks, lighting, coral, T-shirts, signages. Uh, there's just a ton of stuff uh, going into the show and a lot of money. So I'm really hoping it's going to be a profitable show. And even if it's not, that's okay because most of the stuff that I'm buying for the show, I'm going to be able to utilize at local frag swap between the new tanks, lighting, and signage. Uh, that's all stuff that I can continue to use regardless of uh, how this show goes. But uh, more or less, I'm really uh, excited uh, not only to kind of sell my coral, but to meet you guys, to get out there, meet other companies, other YouTubers, and kind of expand and go out of my comfort zone. Uh, if you guys know me, if you've been here for a while, you know that I do the voiceover stuff. I stick to kind of a script, uh, get the information out in the quickest and the most effective way possible, and then leave it at that. I'm not one to do very many collabs. I know I did some stuff earlier on uh, when I started the channel a couple years ago. And I uh, just kind of moved away from it because it's not really part of who I am. But as with everything, we need to change and grow and, and try new things. And that's exactly what I'm going to use this show for is for the networking and to kind of uh, figure out what direction I want to go, not only with uh, the channel, but with my business. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see how it turns out. All right, now that I shut the back door, there shouldn't be as much noise. The central air kicked on in the previous clip, and that's what you guys were hearing, that buzzing sound. And uh, for the sake of me not re-editing this video, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Um, so moving on here for the next thing on the list is the new uh, freshwater Wallstead Method build. Now, this is a 125-gallon reef that I picked up here locally, brand new in the box. And uh, I also got a brand new wet dry filtration. Um, both of them sat in a garage for 10 years and never seen water. Again, still brand new in the box. And um, Scott from Roscoe's Reef came from New Jersey and helped me uh, bring this tank to my house. And it is the heaviest 125 gallon that I've ever picked up in my life. It's got half inch glass on the bottom. I've never seen a tank built like this before. So pretty confident that it's going to hold water and be fine. I am test filling it at the moment. And I literally bought everything I needed to set it up at the moment for the exception of the LED lighting and of course the substrate, which I'll get here probably the next couple of weeks. Now, a quick rundown on how this build is going to uh, kind of go. I will show you guys everything, the whole process like I usually do. But it's going to be based off the Wallstead method, like my 60-gallon cube that was in my son's room about a year ago. And we're going to be doing the natural substrate, doing a lot of plants, carpeting plants, um, some jungle valves, some nice big um, chunks of wood with peat moss and all sorts of stuff in there. We're going to do a, a ton of little fish since I get a great deal on freshwater fish. I'm just going to put in a, probably a couple hundred fish in this tank and uh, kind of see how everything plays out. And uh, yeah, when it comes to lighting, I'm going to be going pretty hard. I'll probably use the same type of lighting that I have over my indoor garden. And we're looking at about 960 watts. Of course, we're going to be running CO2 on this. So yes, it's part of the Wallstead method. Half of it is, and then the rest of it is high-tech planted tank, and that's just kind of my style of freshwater, and uh, it just grows unbelievably fast, which is good because I like the look of a planted tank, but I can also sell the plants locally and continue continually uh, fund uh, the builds that I have going on here in the fish room, so it works out either way. All right, so stay tuned for that. I should have uh, the first video of that series out in the next couple weeks. And uh, yeah, hopefully it turns out good. Keep your fingers crossed that it holds water and then we can continue on with the build. Hopefully it holds water because I've already invested a ton of money into this. So yeah, that would suck if it didn't. I'm pretty confident it will though. Either way, let's go to move on to the next thing here. And that is the Patreon account. Now I'm bringing it back and I've been hesitating to do so for quite a while, but there's a lot of you guys have contacted me on Facebook, the comment section, be email, asking me to bring it back because you want to support uh, the channel and you want to um, kind of have additional content. Now, when I originally had up my Patreon account, it kind of got taken advantage of because I basically allowed it to. Now, for this time, I'm actually just making one tier and it is a behind the scenes tier. Now, what's going to happen is you can subscribe to that a monthly. It's $2.99 a month and you'll get an additional rambling video every week on top of this one which will be uncut. There won't be any voiceover stuff. You also get uh, pictures, which are not going to go on Instagram anymore. They're going to go through the Patreon account. So you'll get updates on builds, equipment, things that are going on here that will never, ever make it to YouTube because uh, there is a lot of stuff that's going on here right now that 
just never sees the light of day on YouTube. And that's because it takes a lot of time to put a video together. Um, trying to get three videos out a week and they take between five and eight hours a piece, depending on how long they are and how many shots have to be taken in voiceovers and how many times I say the F word and I have to edit it out. It just takes a long time to get a video out. So the Patreon account will allow me to give you guys a ton more content without having to worry about it being edited. It's kind of the WYSIWYG of YouTube without ever being on YouTube kind of. And uh, yes, basically I'm gonna upload the video to YouTube, make it unlisted and then put it on the Patreon account so you guys can see it uh, through there. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. I will put a link to it in the description below. If you guys want to support the channel and see that kind of stuff, feel free to subscribe and you can uh, unsubscribe at any point in time uh, that you want. Even if you wanna subscribe for one month and come back in three months and then look through everything that I did for the last three months and then unsubscribe again. People do it, it's okay. Uh, I appreciate the support either way and I just wanna say thank you ahead of time, all right? So moving on to the next thing here, uh, the update or a mini update on the Tangs. Uh, everybody is doing pretty awesome uh, for the exception of the Yellow Tang, kinda crazy how uh, karma is these days. Uh, basically the Yellow Tang was beating up the Scopus Tang for uh, several days, basically just relentless getting him, getting him. And then what, a day ago or so, I look in there and the Scopus Tang is just kicking his ass. Um, so the Scopus Tang's been beating on him for the last couple days, and uh, you know I don't feel bad for him at all, considering the fact that the Yellow Tang killed both of his tank mates and uh, started bullying the Scopus right off the bat. I don't feel bad for him. Now he's fine. He's not gonna die. He's not injured in any way. His his fins are a little kind of split on the top, but it's nothing that's gonna affect his health or kill him. It's just it's just Tang aggression, and they're kind of working it out on their own. But other than that, everybody is chill. I'm feeding the tank uh, four times a day now. Um, and speaking of that, I just sent out Triton test kit again. Uh, this actually is not even speaking of that. It's not even on the same topic. I, I sent out the Triton test kit again because they sent it back to me saying the postage wasn't right. So I just resubmitted it, uh, sent it out. So we'll hear back from Triton someday. And I'll show you guys that. And the reason why I said that is because I'm feeding the tank four times a day now because my phosphates are still too low. I had a friend come over and he's like, yeah, man, your phosphates are still low. I'm like, well, it's getting there. It's a lot better than it was a 0.008. It's definitely a lot higher than that. And uh, speaking of that, I went ahead and picked up a HANA phosphate reader because I'm going to check it every week just to kind of get those levels back up. I mean, I'm feeding the tank a ton of food. I've got more fish in there. And then we got uh, five more in quarantine right now, which you guys will see here later in the video. But uh, yeah, so uh, phosphate levels are still low. They're getting there. It's just taking a little bit for this tank. All right, so the next thing on the list here is a mini update on the calc reactor. Now, I know that I got to put part two out, which you guys should expect probably tomorrow. And that will be the setup on the Apex and the programming, all that kind of stuff and kind of how I've dialed it in. Now, I've had it on there for about a week and a half now, something like that. And um, I've dialed it in. I'm dosing a ton of calc right now. I think I'm do dosing a gallon and a half a day of calc. I and mean, that's saturated calc too. Um, and um, it's working. It's definitely helping with the pH. Now I still have to increase my calcium reactor to keep up with the demand of the tank. So a gallon of saturated calc plus a calcium reactor uh, and the, is, is keeping the tank at about 8.5 dKH, but I want it back up to my 9.5 because it has dropped uh, regardless of the amount of calc I have going in there. And um, I'm actually, I just ordered some flow meters that are going to go to my FMM through the Apex. So we're going to put one on the calc. We're also going to go ahead and put one on the calcium reactor so I can see if the flow changes over time. And I can also kind of dial in just to make sure that if a tube gets clogged up with calcification and stuff like that, I could catch that issue before I have a problem with it. And uh, yeah, so I'm still dialing in the calc reactor, trying to figure out how I want to do it, um, kind of how much I want to uh, dose per minute, like milliliters per minute. Right now it's 60 milliliters per minute, and I have it on for uh, five minutes at a time, and it's on, it comes on basically 16 times a day, and it evolves around the four times that the pump kicks on. So you guys will see all that in the next video. And uh, yeah, we're just kind of doing some trial and error and testing some things out and kind of see exactly what I want to do with this reactor. All right, so the next thing on the list here is I just got in some new inverts for the website. I just added the Astria snail. Now, I'm a big fan of the uh, the turbo snails, like the bigger turbo snails, like the Mexican turbo snails. Um, but I just, when I order them, they just don't do well or they're not big enough to justify the price. So I went ahead and invested a pretty good chunk of cash in the Astria snails, added them to my frag system as well as uh, the 30 gallon and some other tanks here. And um, they're doing quite well i re actually really like them so i went ahead and put them up on the website ordered some more and uh yeah i pretty much have the best price on the internet so far for astrea snails i at least that i found i mean I, I didn't look excessively through the internet so there's probably somebody out there lowballing me but either way uh, a few orders went out with that they ship 
really well, no problem so far. And uh, that kind of brings my inverts up to uh, the grand total of four different types. We have the black black shelled blue legs, the larger white shell blue legs, the emerald crabs, and now the Astrea snails. I will be adding some other stuff like nerites and um, you know nerith snails, sarah snails, and um, just other stuff, peppermint shrimp and stuff like that down the road. For right now, I'm kind of just trial and error. I want to see what sells, what doesn't sell. There's no reason to keep a thousand inverts here if the stuff's not going to sell because it's kind of like feeding a whole bunch of fish. If there's no algae in the tank for them to eat, you got to feed them separately to make sure they don't kill each other and they don't die off. So it's uh, it's kind of like a juggling act, but overall it's doing quite well. All right, so the next thing here is going to be the quarantine tank. Now I have a client's fish here. He has uh, six antheas in here as well as a, a sailfin tank, which are doing great. I haven't lost any fish in this order yet for the exception of my Melanorus ras. Uh, he came in pretty small and was kind of iffy from the beginning. So, uh, you know, I... I guess I can count him as being a loss, but I kind of figured he wasn't going to make it from the beginning. Uh, but either way, this uh, fish order is doing quite well. Uh, now, I do have some um, Mahanos or whatever you want to call them in the bottom there. Um, I'll put up the name eventually, uh, probably during the editing process here. Uh, but anyways, it's a brackish fish. It's a schooling fish. And I saw it at a frag swap at the Williamsport High School. They have these in their big, big system. And I fell in love with them, so I went ahead and ordered uh, five of them. They're a, they're a schooling fish i'm bringing their uh, salinity up right now but i'm going to do it over the next few weeks while they're in quarantine and uh they are aggressive eaters like unbelievable um, how aggressive they are and uh they're doing quite well haven't lost any of those yet and i'm uh, definitely looking forward to getting those guys into the 300 gallon tank all right so the last thing on the list here is the indoor and outdoor garden now i'm going to leave this more for the second rambling video in the future but for right now i'm going to give you guys a little mini update now um we had a hailstorm, I think a week and a half ago or so, which wiped out the majority of the plants on the back deck, at least to the point where they were definitely crippled and I had to peel off the leaves and kind of start over. Uh, needless to say, the they have grown back. I put some fertilizer in there and they're really coming back at full force and doing quite well. Now, um, the indoor garden is doing even better. I actually had to remove some of the plants and put them on the back deck just because I ran out of room down here. Um, I am doing a test between um, having the same plants outside opposed to being inside. And I'll tell you right now that the inside plants grow um, 10 times faster, produce fruit much quicker. And um, it's just because I have that 16 hours of direct lighting over them, I think is where the major difference is. You're not dealing with the wind or the excess rain or excess heat. And um, speaking of the garden outside as well, I, I ordered a irrigation system with a timer because I, right now I have to water the back deck plants two or three times a day when it's over 90 degrees or everything wilts to basically nothing. So I went ahead and got the irrigation system, which I'll hook up and probably show you guys in the separate videos uh, on the Patreon there. And uh, I'll show you guys exactly how I hook everything up and pretty much put it on a timer and it'll take care of itself outside. That way I don't have to worry about um, having to be here throughout the day to make sure the plants don't get roasted through the uh, direct sunlight. Because uh, in the winter time, I don't really get much sun out back. Uh, during the summertime, it's literally from uh, 7 a.m all the way through to about 8 p.m. or something like that right now. It's just direct sun all damn day long, which is good for the plants, but definitely hard on them if there's not enough water. And with them being in pots, they definitely um, need a lot more water or beam water more often. Well, guys, that's about it for this video. I think we're approaching about 13 minutes, so I think that's enough talking on my end. And, uh, yeah, if you guys like the video, definitely give it a thumbs up. And if you're new, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I always have stuff coming out here. And I am pushing for three videos a week on this channel. I will be starting a new series um, here in the future regarding kind of a Q&A. Basically, I'll read someone's email, go through all the questions that they have and make a video on it. And uh, that's just part of a long list of about uh, 65 videos that I have for the channel that are already in the works. And one thing you guys got to realize is when you guys see a video that's not like this, um, usually that video is about three weeks to a month and a half behind schedule. So if you see a new tank up and running, it's been up for a while already before I got the video out. And that's just kind of, I don't know when that started happening. I think uh, probably a year ago, I think I just started falling behind on videos and then more ideas came in. So I just keep a list to check off what I want to talk about and kind of see how I can fit everything together. It's just, I don't know, it's my way of doing it. It kind of works. But either way, guys, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.